This is Module 2, Lesson 2, Western Philosophy, Medieval Period. The Middle Ages or Medieval Period is a period in European history from the collapse of the Roman civilization in the 5th century to the period of the Renaissance and the Age of Discovery between 13th and 15th centuries. The term and its conventional meaning were introduced by Italian humanists in order to distinguish themselves from it. Sometimes it is referred to as Dark Ages because it presented the confusing and often contradictory picture of a society attempting to structure itself politically on a spiritual basis. We will talk more about this in Prof. Ed. For now, let's just focus on some philosophers and their philosophies related to the concept of a human person. Let's get started! Question. He claims that man is substantially united body and soul. The soul is united with the human body and it is the principle of life. A. Anselm, B. Augustine of Hippo, C. Thomas Aquinas, and letter D. Avicenna. You got 5 seconds, teacher. And the answer is letter C. Thomas Aquinas. Who are these people? These people were from the medieval period. Anselm, Augustine, and Thomas were all Christians while Avicenna was a Muslim. In this lesson, we will talk about Augustine and Aquinas. If you are interested with Anselm and Avicenna, by all means, do read their lives and works. They are super interesting philosophers and theologians. Let's look at the academic context where Augustine and Thomas lived. This period was characterized by theodicy, which is the study of God with the use of reason alone. Do not confuse this with theology, which is the study of God with the use of faith and reason. And since the academic pursuits were characterized by theodicy, everything was viewed in the context of God's existence. Ang lahat ng bagay ay pinag-aaralan sa konteksto ng pananampalataya sa Diyos. Another thing is that the academic pursuits were concerned with the analysis of God, His nature, and properties. The discourses, dialogues, debates, and discussions were usually in the realm of metaphysics, things that are beyond physics. And logic and philosophy of language were also hot topics in the medieval period. This was the academic setting where Augustine and Aquinas lived. Let's talk about Augustine of Hippo. For him, God created humans with a mortal body and with an immortal soul and gave them free will. God created human beings as naturally good, but the good in us ceases to be good when we turn away from God. This is re related to his teachings on original sin. One of Augustine's great contributions is the discourse on free will, which he considered as the source of evil in the world. During his time, people were asking, where is evil from? Is it from God? And Augustine answered that it is from our free will. Human is responsible for the existence of evil, not God, because God is absolute goodness. St. Augustine believes that our very nature, which is our free will, is what makes us imperfect. But he believes that we are capable of attaining or reaching perfection only if we keep ourselves good, that is, if we stay and stick with God. Please check the separate video about St. Augustine's life and works. Let's now come to Thomas Aquinas. Thomas Aquinas understands human as a whole. For him, a human person is substantially united body and soul. The soul which is united with the human body is defined by Augustine as the principle of life. So, death is a separation of body and soul. The soul requires the body as the material medium for its operations, particularly perception. But the soul has operative functions which do not need a material medium. They are our intellect and will. So for him, when we die, the intellect and will remain in the soul as it is immortal, simple, and incorruptible. Augustine and Thomas are two great figures from the medieval period who contributed in our study of the human person, especially in the context of values education. As a being with free will and intellect, values education is tasked to educate the will of the students. We call it conscience in theology. In order to desire what is good, that which is something desirable. And to educate the intellect to seek the truth and reject lies. 
But at the turn of the next period, the modern period, the concept of good and truth were compromised due to several conflicts that brought political, religious, cultural, intellectual, and moral revolutions. What are those conflicts? Let's find out. To make sense of the historical period in the next lesson, let's have a quick overview of the situation at the end of the medieval period and the beginning of the modern period. The events are called Reformation and the Counter-Reformation. Let's talk about the Reformation first. The Reformation was a religious, intellectual, political, and cultural movement or event that happened in the beginning of the 16th century. It started when a Catholic Augustinian monk, Martin Luther, posted his 95 Theses at the church's door in Germany in 1517. Luther's 95 Theses contained the abuses that he saw in the Catholic Church, for example, simony or simony, the buying and selling of church offices and services, the nepotism, the practice among those with power and influence of favoring relatives and friends, and many other scandals and abuses. As an Augustinian monk, Luther wanted to reform the church from within, but those in power were busy with worldly things and did not listen to him. Instead, he was declared heretic and an outlaw, so the, the reformation of the Catholic Church was delayed. On the other hand, the other political leaders in Germany and in other parts of Europe who were also against the abuses of the Catholic Church supported Luther. They formed alliances and they set up their own church based on the doc doctrines of sola scriptura or Bible alone, sola fide or faith alone, and sola gratia or grace alone. And everything outside of these doctrines were rejected. So, they rejected the Catholic Church and they established the Protestant Church. This made Luther the father of the Reformation and the Protestantism. With the Protestantism quickly spreading throughout Europe, the Catholic Church responded with its counter-reformation in 1545. Imagine Luther posted his thesis in 1517 and the Church responded with its counter-reformation only in 1545. That's almost 30 year delay. And by this time, Europe was already torn apart. Protestantism had already spread inside and outside Europe. Nevertheless, the Church managed to convene the Council of Trent in 1545 to counter the Protestantism and to renew the Catholic Church from within. Many religious groups were established during this time to help the Church in its renewal. To preach the gospel, to educate, to care for the sick, the homeless, and the victims of war, and to go in a mission. The religious groups that were established this time were, for example, Barnabites, Hospitaller Order, the Chameleons, that is called Carmelites, the new groups of Cistercians, the Order of Friar Minor Capuchin, the Augustinian Recollects, the Sumascans, the Ursulines, the Sisters of the Annunciation, the Adorno Fathers, the Society of Jesus or Jesuits, and many more. They had been very instrumental in the renewal of the Catholic Church. Meanwhile, the Protestants and the Catholics were having trouble living together in various parts of Europe. The two factions, having the backing of some powerful monarchs, engaged into a bloody and violent armed conflict. This led to a 30-year 30 30 year war of religion. Numerous people died. Many people fled. Many children were orphaned. Countless people were displaced. People were totally lost. Life was really difficult and people lived impoverishedly. The Thirty Year War ended with the Peace of Westphalia in 1648. Then in 1555, at the Peace of Augsburg, the principle Coios Regio, Eos Religio, was followed in Europe. It literally means whose realm, their religion. This means that the religion of the ruler was to, be, was to dictate the religion of the people. For example, if the king is a Protestant, the people should also be Protestant. If the king is a Catholic, the people should also be Catholic. With this principle, those who cannot accept the religion of the king were welcome to leave and go to other kingdoms or countries. Incidentally, this was also the time of exploration, expansion, and discovery. The powerful countries in Europe were engaged in exploration activities. It was the time when Columbus discovered the big chunk of the American land. The English explorers landed in the place we now call the United States of America. The French explorers landed in the place we now call Canada. The Portuguese explorers conquered the place we now call Brazil, 
while the Spanish explorers conquered most of, lands, most of the lands in the South America and some portions in the United States. They were also the explorers who re reached the Philippines and included it as one of their colonies. In this colonization period, you can also say that the colonizers brought their religion with them. That is how the Philippines became a Catholic country in Asia. So this is where we close the medieval period and this was the setting at the beginning of the modern period. That brings us to the end of this lesson. The medieval period ended with a lot of things happening at the backdrop, which we will pick up at the beginning of the modern period. To recap, we discussed the philosophies of man of two prominent figures from the medieval period, Augustine of Hippo and Thomas Aquinas. Also, we briefly describe the historical setting at the end of this period. We talk about the Reformation and the Counter-Reformation, including the Age of Exploration and Discovery. That's the Module 2, Lesson 2, Western Philosophy, Medieval Period. See you in the next video.